This is your stranger stand-up comedy. When I was a youngster around the block, now I come from the Bronx. I come from the gutters of the Bronx, the streets of the Bronx, the East Bronx. And my competition for women and to survive socially were your jock, who was much stronger, better looking, taller, more powerful, more personable, 40 pound heavier, six, four to six inch taller or more than the little shorties. So to compensate for all of this, our mamas sent us to Arthur Murray Dance Studio. There we were supposed to learn the social graces, how to approach a woman, how to talk to a woman, what to say, when to say it, how to say it, how to develop confidence and poise and all that other bullshit that you can't develop if you're not in shape. You can't develop it if you're not powerful, if you're not tough in your mind, tough in your body, if you're not a good hell raiser, strong grip, powerful punching, grabbing, pushing, pulling, power, brute strength, positional strength, coordination, speed. That's what I'm talking about. But we didn't have any of those things. We were little sissies around the block. So when we went to Arthur Murray Dance Studio to learn, we got to dance with and talk to chairs. And we took off our jackets. There weren't enough girls to go around. If they were, we were too short to dance with them. So we would dance if we were lucky with the instructor. Or we would dance with a chair. We'd grab a chair and we'd dance with that chair. We take off our jackets and pretend it was a woman and we'll dance with that. And the instructor told us what to say. The instructor told us how to approach, what to say, so we would practice with chairs. And sometime, if we were lucky, they'd bring mannequins in. And we practice with that. We dance with the mannequin. We dance with the chair. We became good at it. So when we went to the dance halls, the little shorties like me, we danced by ourselves because we couldn't get any dance. When my DJ played a Johnny Mathis tune, we couldn't get a dance to save our lives. So we'll dance with ourselves. We took our jackets off and we'll dance with ourselves. And we'd talk to the jacket. We were good at that. We could, oh, we could talk some shit to a jacket. I'm telling you, we could talk some trash to a jacket. Same thing like a chair. We danced out the little shorties. Little guys like me, we're dancing with our chairs. Everybody else has a woman to dance with. The other stags. We were slow dancing with our jackets. We took our jackets off and pretend it's a woman. We're talking to the jacket. Can you, understand? Can you dig what I'm saying? And when we dance with the chairs at the Arthur Murray Dance Studio to teach us personality, to teach us poise, to teach us a presence, to try to give us an appeal to women, the instructor stood right behind us and told us what to say to get us used to it. So we got used to Delusions of grandeur, wishful thinking, fantasies. And then what follows from that, of course, is to try to cut the corners that you can't cut. You see, you can't cheat on being in tremendous physical shape. That's where your personality is. That's where your dynamism is. That's how you magnetize a woman. That's the only way. You get yourself in shape. And particularly if you're a short man, you'll get yourself in tremendous shape. You drive iron, but you do it right. You build up your grip. You build your punching power, your pushing power, your grabbing power, your pulling power, your brute strength, your balance, your core strength. Then along with that, you develop assertiveness, skills, verbal judo, and you become adept at it. That's how you get competitive. But we try to cut corners we try, because our mothers built us to be sissies. That's the truth. You won't hear this from anybody else except your stranger. You're not going to hear it. So as a consequence of that, we're forced to 
get fetish clothing. We wore our garrison belts. That's a fighting, big, thick leather belt, a fighting belt. We wore our fat backs. That's the type of a jacket that makes us have a fat ass. It was in those days that a big old ass was in. So you'd parade around Lexington, 77 Lexington in that area in Manhattan with our fat backs. And we parade up and down hoping to attract the women with our big backs, our big asses. You believe in something like that? You believe that bullshit? We'd all imitate Elvis and James Dean. James Dean was a little fart of a man, little guy. Elvis was a little guy, 155, 160, that's all. But to us, these were God Almighty, especially when they got all the women. We wanted the women for ourselves. We wanted the women. We wanted to be just like them. Can you imagine wanting to emulate a Thomas Cruz? Thomas Cruz is a little bitty guy. This is insanity. You can't cut corners. There are no shortcuts like they tell us in the Bronx, like we say in the Bronx. You try the shortcut. You try to cut corners. Now you're going to have to start all. You're going to have to go right back to where you were before and start right from the beginning. But this time you're going to do it right. You don't cut no corners. Why? Because you have to know the process. You got to get blooded as you go. You got to get. You got to take an ass whooping as you go along to learn. That's why I say bad sex. Well, it's better than no sex. Now, why would I say a thing like that? Sounds crazy. No. How else can it get better? How are you going to learn from your mistakes? You got to make your mistakes. You got to want the mistakes. You got to love the mistakes. And you've got to be desensitized, de embarrassed to get into that arena and fight like hell for your life. One lounge lizard, an expert at working the clubs for the women, he told me when you get into the club, it's each man for himself and you're fighting for your life. The women have the power. It's the woman who chooses. That's why your jock spends hours prepping up to go to a club or wherever you go to try to meet a woman, try to cut the corners. They put the colognes on. They're combing their hair ten different times. They're shaving, putting on the, putting on the clothes and all that other bullshit trying to work a personality, work their rap. I remember I went to one of the dance halls in, uh, in San, well, now in San Diego. And my partner was a lounge lizard. And the lounge lizard said, when we get into the club, you got to fight for your life. I said, well, what the hell you mean by that? He said, there's going to be all kinds of dudes, athletic dudes, and Everybody's fighting for a woman. Everybody's fighting for the attention and the confirmation and the social and physical acceptance of that woman. And he said, I'm going to look for three good cues. I don't act on the first cue. If I get three good cues from the woman, I'm sending drinks over. And we've got to come in behind the drinks. And let me tell you something. Everybody was taller than me. I was scared like hell. I was flop sweating all over the damn place. And my buddy, who's about 6'2", he sent the drinks over to a blonde and a brunette. And he said, as soon as the drinks arrive, we have to get over there and start rapping. And I said, well, what the hell am I going to say? What am I going to say? What, am I, what should I say? And remember, you got all kinds of dids, dudes, Asshole, jock, cool guy, horning in on you. So the drinks came over, we went on, oh Jesus, I was flop sweating all over the place. And of course, you know what happened. As soon as I came over, of course, the woman physically was repulsed by me. She rejected me. And I look again, and another dead dude, asshole, jock, cool guy, was all over it, that fast. And there are some clubs where you get on the dance floor 
and another man can dance your date away from you. And that's fair game. It's a battlefield out there. Same thing when you do stand-up comedy. You get up on that stand-up comedy, it's really stand-up combat. When you go into a stand-up club, you can expect anything. Anything. The stand-up comic, comic is best when he goes on the red edge and goes for it big time. You use whatever it takes to get the laugh. That's what stand-up is. It's slash and burn. <laughs>